uh, thought-provoking uh, session. 20 minutes goes very fast. Huh? Yeah, we could have listened a lot longer to you. But next up is uh, Roger Karlsson. Roger is from the Swedish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and he is to speak about the new results strategy that Sweden has recently launched. So, please. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Um, it's great to see so many uh, former colleagues, uh, colleagues and uh, also friends uh, in, in this group of people. Um, it's very encouraging to see. Uh, I, will, I will present the new strategy for, for Afghanistan. Uh, I will start with a short historic outline just to, to highlight a few things where we come from in our thinking when it comes to development in Afghanistan and then I talk mainly on, on the bilateral uh, aid to, uh, to Afghanistan and then I will talk about, about the, the new strategy obviously and also some, something on, on a few challenges and, uh, and opportunities that we, that we see. Uh, Sweden started the development cooperation in Afghanistan already in the, in the 1970s. Uh, it was then very small scale and uh, didn't really increase until after the Soviet invasion when, uh, when the Swedish Committee for Afghanistan started its work and uh, Sweden started channeling uh, resources through that organization. It was then mainly focused on, on humanitarian aid for, for a long time. Uh, then in 2001, uh, after we, we started increasing uh, our cooperation in Afghanistan, and in parallel with the uh, with the then increasing military engagement from 2002 and onwards, uh, we increased annually our aid from about 13 million US dollars in 2001 to levels around 100 million US dollars uh, just last year. In total, since 2001, we have channeled around 60 million US dollars to Afghanistan. It's a substantial amount of money. Uh, we also uh, channel money through other uh, organizations, through the EU aid budget, uh, through core support to the UN, and, uh, and uh, also substantial humanitarian. Uh, last year, it was around 20 million. Uh, US dollars and uh, the last few years uh, that that amount has varied uh, 20 million is uh, s somewhat of a of a record note and I think it will be equal to that or perhaps slightly higher this year in 2009 a new strategy was launched for for Afghanistan and it focused on democracy human rights and equality uh, education and private sector development there was a small uh, earmarking to the northern Afghanistan, or about a quarter of the of the amount. And in northern Afghanistan, we worked, uh, among other things, with infrastructure. Uh, this strategy was revised in 2011. Uh, it was remained focus. The remaining focus was still on on democracy, human rights, equality, and education. And private sector development was moved to northern Afghanistan uh, under this earmarking. Uh, the private sector development was then the idea was to support economic development through uh, the starting up of, of small enterprises uh, in conjunction with, with the infrastructure support among other things. Uh, in 2012 there was a, a conference in Tokyo. Uh, Sweden uh, announced its ambition to support Afghanistan for, for the next 10 years. Uh, next 10 years starting in 2015 to 2024 and uh, we announced an indicative volume of 1 to 1.2 mil billion US dollars. We presented a concept called the five E's for Afghan development and it is in those five E's the new strategy uh, takes its, uh, its, its starting point and the main difference to the previous direction was that there was a stronger focus on economic development. But there was also a thought that economic development needed to take place then perhaps on a more um, basic level, uh, focusing on rural areas. 
Uh, this new strategy was decided on by the former government uh, in June and covers the period 2014 to 2019. So what happened was that the new strategy replaced the last six months of the old strategy. So, so there was no, nothing uh, so, uh, not, not, not so um, revolutionizing. But, but since we had a new strategy ready, uh, the decision was made that uh, the new should, uh, strategy should start uh, its work immediately. Uh, and the volume was about half of the, the Tokyo commitment. Uh, the main focus is on supporting Afghanistan's own development uh, and then also uh, thinking about the economic development and the challenges. We heard here uh, there is an economic crisis and, and social crisis in the country. This is, this is where we see that we need to, to take off. And the five E's then focus on empowerment, which replaces uh, democracy, human rights and equality. Uh, you could say, uh, education, uh, employment, enterprise, which includes rural development, and uh, economic integration. The target group uh, is broadened a bit compared to the previous strategy and comprised of uh, uh, people living in poverty in rural areas, but with a focus on women and children. Uh, there is no longer any earmarking to the northern provinces, but we see now Afghanistan as a whole. Uh, the starting point for this change was that we look at the needs in the country and where we have the greatest opportunities for sustainable results. This should be the, the judgment that is made when, when deciding what programs and where they, they are implemented. So what is new? I'd like to highlight a few of those things. I'm, I'm sure you're very curious of this. Um, economic development, collecting then employment, uh, enterprise with rural development, as well as economic integration. Uh, it's important to, to look at the mainly subsistence economy in, in Afghanistan as, as perhaps not completely integrated with the national level of the economy and try to bring those two together. Um, we see this as important for a sustainable, uh, in, inclusive development in the country. Uh, this is also where we see the most potential to then decrease the aid dependency that is very high in, in Afghanistan. Uh, this, uh, these are all preconditions to build a, a peaceful and democratic state. Uh, in employment, we mainly see employability as, as where we can contribute the most. Uh, we talk about skills and knowledge. Uh, and there are various reasons for this. We have seen that uh, the level of capacity on, on many levels in Afghanistan is, is very low and this is no surprise to anyone that has been there. There's also great potential to, uh, to reach uh, improvement in these areas. When it comes to enterprise and rural development, increased productivity in agriculture uh, add value to, to the pro produce uh, an improved sustainable use of natural resources. Uh, the main uh, reason for this is to try to increase community resilience to adverse changes. This, we hope, could lead to a decreased dependency on, for example, humanitarian assistance. Uh, how this should be done is, is a, a task for, uh, for, for CEDA to, to take forward. Uh, also under enterprise, and more related than to enterprise, we, we look at improved livelihoods and commercial activities. And when we talk about commercial activities rather than private sector development, we start off that perhaps small enterprise was, uh, small enterprises was too big a step from, from the actual uh, capacity that could be found in the countryside. And when we talk then on, on more basic uh, more basic, how to say, uh, 
ways to 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 do uh, basically we see the the farmer as as a as a part in the private uh, private sector already and it's about adding value to the products and being able to sell those it, it doesn't have to be uh, uh, a small or micro enterprise to to be private sector. Th this is the starting point for that. The, the important thing here is to add value to, to the products uh, that, that uh, Afghanistan actually can produce. Uh, under economic integration we look at infrastructure to improve this, improve the access to markets which is of course a precondition to what I, I just said about uh, enterprise and rural development. And importantly, access to financial services. We have seen in many parts of the world that uh, the ability to, to use SMS banking for payments, for example, or market access, market information, can, can do uh, quite a, a big difference in the countryside. And then just a few words on, on empowerment, as, as uh, we have worked for a long time in this area. Here we, we try to highlight uh, the strength and capacity of the state to mobilize its own resources and, and to manage its finances and uh, in the light of the, 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 the fiscal gap the, this is perhaps well needed. Uh, we also look here at social mobilization and uh, in particular then uh, the rights and knowledge of their rights for women and girls. Uh, education is another of, of our well-established areas of operation and, and here we, we try to uh, focus more on, uh, on the quality of the education to, uh, to get more out of uh, the number of uh, pe people that, that go through the education system. In this, in this work we see the Tokyo uh, framework as a, as a central document. We have uh, called it a contract even. Uh, it's Im important for us to see here uh, progress and the new Afghan government is expected to to confirm the commitment to this reform agenda that they have uh, they have agreed to and I'm sure my my colleague Anders will talk a bit, a bit more on that in the uh, in the panel. Uh, of course Afghanistan, that there's very, we see big challenges to, uh, great challenges to uh, implementing aid in, in this country, in this context that is both insecure, uh, it is, uh, we, we see great obstacles to, to development, uh, corruption is one. Uh, uh, the economy, the illicit economy surrounding the, the handling of narcotics is, is another. Uh, we see high de aid dependency as one challenge, the low capacity as one challenge. Uh, the great humanitarian needs in parts of the countries is another challenge. Uh, Sweden as a donor cannot do everything in all those areas, but, but we need to be aware of these, these issues. Um, so what do we do to sort of mitigate, to uh, to uh, navigate through the through these these difficulties well we have developed in in our in the past few years uh, a model where we channel our aid through mainly three channels uh, one is uh, through the the world bank and uh, the funds uh, the, the joint owner funds for um, rebuilding afghanistan artf uh, we have uh, one large part through the UN system, but through bilateral agreements with the UN. Uh, so they are basically then an implementing partner in Afghanistan. Uh, for example, building roads, uh, improving uh, the, the education system, uh, or uh, uh, supporting capacity, increased capacity in the electoral process, uh, and, and so on. And the third channel is through the civil society and, and here uh, the Swedish Committee for Afghanistan is, is a major recipient. Uh, we think that these, this division between these three uh, channels is, is, a, is a good way forward 
for, for donor of Sweden size. Uh, it is manageable, uh, I think. Uh, it, uh, it is quite easy to, uh, to have an overview of what is going on and uh, uh, I think that we have the, the capacity of, of following these, these, these flows quite, quite closely. And we shouldn't rem uh, forget then, and uh, let me remind you of, of these other channels that I mentioned uh, earlier on, uh, that are also substantial. And, and taking all together, uh, we, we have a very uh, large commitment to Afghanistan. Uh, that was what I was going to say, and I think I was within the time limit here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I saved a few minutes to, uh, to see that here. Thank you. Thank you.